Hey guys, how's it going? Tears back again with another episode of the interactive Road to Division 1 series here on Xbox One. Of course, this is the series where you guys choose the teams that we play with, going through the head-to-head -head ranked games, ranked divisions, trying to get to that Division 1 title. Now, the first team we're playing with today is FC Kaiserslautern, uh, suggested by WheelsFL. Thank you very much to him for the suggestion. Now, I will say this straight off the bat. I really did not enjoy playing with FC Kaiserslautern. Uh, we're coming up against SC Bastia, a French side. Now, if you don't know, the uh, the head-to-head -head, uh, kind of the the well, what's the saying? The squad customizations are kind of updated a lot sooner than Ultimate Team, and in fact, Gibral Cisse has moved to SC Bastia from. Uh, Kuban Krasnodar, where he was previously playing in Russia, so he's actually playing with uh, Gibral Cisse up top in this game, and is going to get off, get him off to uh, a fantastic start. Just before half time, the amount of power behind that header is absolutely ridiculous. So uh, we're going in at half time, down at the break, and as you can see, we're having more of the ball, but not as many chances. And I was really just struggling to keep, well, not keep hold of the ball, but struggling to create anything, especially in the first half. There's a striker up front called Idrisu. Now I went with him to uh, to start with because he he's quite tall he's big built and he looked stat wise as if he was going to be half decent he was the highest rated overall had decent uh, you know first touch finishing pace stats etc but to play with he was just so sluggish he was horrible so I bought on this guy Bunyaku at half time for uh, for Adrisu we had a little bit more of an attacking threat in this uh, in the second half you see him had the first effort went just wide that second effort went just wide as well but you can see how his introduction into the game had completely changed the way we were playing. We're going to have a wonderful chance. Here. Zola goes around three defenders before just delaying pulling the trigger. He just would not shoot in the 94th or 92nd minute. And uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get ourselves back in it. But we're into the 94th minute now. Down the line to Zola. Squares the ball. Up goes Moutmore. Absolute godsend. Late drama here at FC Kaiserslautern. We pick up an equaliser in the very, very last seconds of the game. Literally, he kicked off again. We had one touch, and then the game was over. The referee blew the final whistle. We snatch a point against SC Bastia. Absolutely delighted to come away with that. Uh, with that point considering I just did not like playing with the team but we're going to play as a side that are a little bit better than uh, FC Kaiserslautern this suggestion comes in from say what 1000 and Funky Town 49 it is of course as you can see on your screen Real Sociedad now they have been very very good recently in the past couple of years in fact in uh, in La Liga now well, we're coming up against French opposition yet again uh, the first guy was blabbering through his uh, connect system in French this guy uh, I, it, by the sounds of things it sounded like he was trying to stab a baby to death with a rusty spoon I have no idea what was going on it's just well I, uh, I take out the game sound because you wouldn't have had any game sound it would have just been a baby crying for the entirety of the 90 minutes so perhaps he was distracted a little but as you can see there I had the confidence in that situation to head the ball back to the goalkeeper and that was crucial that was the difference between this game and the previous one I just felt comfortable playing with him we move forward into the 12th minute it's a fantastic finish from Chabi Prieto across the goalkeeper into the bottom corner off the post a lovely ball across the top from, uh, from Carlos Vea I played Vea up top as the main striker because uh, normally he's a, he's a winger, left wing or right wing. And I moved him into the middle because of his extra pace he could have up top. And uh, I moved, I played Castro out wide right. And of course, you've got uh, Antoine Griezmann out there on the left wing. He's actually picked up an inform, not this week, but last week. So he's definitely a good player. And uh, he was really, really instrumental to a lot of the stuff that went on in the first half. But Gignac rises superbly there we managed to scramble the ball clear but he's bounced the ball off the post and it shows that he is an attacking threat and I didn't want to get complacent at the back we we're going through Griezmann again the ball's whipped in Bayer's on the end of it lovely header no right whatsoever to get up to that and I got so excited uh, just I just kind of grabbed gripped the controller when that went in and just kind of skipped all of the replays immediately but we went in at half time with that 2-0 lead and I was just so so pleased that we'd, uh, we were actually playing some nice football for once because uh, it's been a while since we've uh, we've really dominated a game uh, in the past couple of episodes. Obviously, we did very, very well with Atletico Madrid. Maybe it's just the style of play that, uh, that the La Liga teams have that suits my personal uh, my personal approach to playing FIFA. But Andre Pierre Gignac is going to strike the bar yet again in the second half, just showing that the game definitely wasn't dead yet. And if I was going to, uh, you know, let my uh, my foot off the gas pedal, then he was definitely going to punish me. But Carlos for a lovely turn in on his left foot. Unfortunate that he uh, that he has the first effort saved, but somehow manages to get the ball back deflected back to him and this time he makes no mistake it's 3-0 just before the 70th minute and that is how the game is going to end we're going to run out 3-0 comfortable winners and pick up three points for our division eight 
league. So uh, we're pushing into the next game. Unfortunately, I kind of missed the bit where you see the, the first initial team. I, I forgot to hit record for, uh, for this final bit because there was a delay between me uh, recording the first two games and the second two, but uh, or second one rather. But we're playing here as uh, Plymouth Argyle, suggested by Joss H and Will Chad. But uh, we come out against Rangers. Now, initially, I thought, shit, Rangers, that's a bit of an unfair pair up. But to be fair, they only really got a couple of uh, standout players Templeton, as you can see on the ball there, and John Daly, who he in fact played the ball into. But uh, they had a decent chance there in the early few minutes. Now, Rangers are a side that are definitely living on former glory shall we say at present I don't want to offend any Rangers fans because they are of course one of the biggest teams in Scotland it's basically Rangers and Celtic are the big two and Rangers are just storming their way back up through the league since their uh, relic or kind of forced relegation because of all the financial issues etc but he was eventually going to take the lead you could see from the uh, the highlights so far that he definitely was on top in his opening stages I don't often play with teams that are you know a kind of one one and a half star like Plymouth and uh, it took me a while to kind of settle down and find my rhythm with the team but once we did we started to play some quite nice football similar to the game before although the uh, the opposition in this case wasn't as distracted as the previous guy and definitely gave me a battle we were we were lucky we have to say we were lucky to only be uh, one nil down by the time that uh, Ruben Reed scored that fantastic equaliser in the 42nd minute but then I did get a little bit complacent and literally straight after kickoff he's going to run down the left Foster just absolutely rinses the entire left hand side of my uh, of my squad or of my starting team and uh, John Daly wins the header pops the ball into the back of the net and after spending so much time and effort trying to get myself back in the game we literally throw it all away immediately so we go in at half time at 2-1 down so uh, all to do in the second half definitely all to do but because I'd uh, been you know getting my way back into the game I definitely felt confident that we were going to be able to get something out of it and that right there is the difference between gold players and bronze players that was uh, a horrible chip to tempt it was a nice ball through but he just didn't have the ability to finish the ball off finish a chance off and I still don't know how Calvin and Lavery has missed that chance I've watched that four or five times he steps inside he's got so much space and again that is the difference between a bronze striker and a clinical gold one. Just smashes it wide. So, so disappointing. But Alexandra, or Alessandra rather, he's going to play a lovely ball across or over the top to Ruben Reed. Chest down, touch to sell himself, gives it a whack and into the back of the corner it goes. Lovely, lovely finish and we are back in the game at 2-2. Two -two. That is absolutely superb. I worked out, I need, well I had to prioritise everything going through Ruben Reed because Calvin Lavery was just so unbelievably poor and he just absolutely saved me in this game. That was a fantastic strike. And so I made a couple of changes, or well, I made one change, bringing on Obadai for Hurah Hurahain. Uh, that's a hard name to say, weirdly. But uh, he made three changes, so he had a lot of fresh legs on the pitch, and that did show towards the end of the game. I definitely had to defend a little bit more than I had been having to do during the second half. But we were going to get another chance here towards the uh, towards the end of the second half. Ruben Reed's going to give it a whack, looking for a hat trick, going for that top corner. And uh, he's just inches, absolutely inches wide of that top left-hand side. You'll see from this one, the replay... He's bending towards the top and just bends away, just curls away at the last minute. But we had late drama in the first game. The drama right at the end of this third game is just ridiculous. You'll see the ball eventually is going to pop free to Ruben Reed. That is a penalty. I don't care what anyone says. Ruben Reed's about to put the ball into the back of the net. He's just taken away his standing leg. Nothing given. He clears the ball. The referee blows the final whistle. We should have had a penalty in the final minutes there, which would have won us the game, which would have got us three points. And I was just absolutely gobsmacked that nothing was given. If that had been a live commentary, well, there wouldn't have been any point doing a live commentary because I just sat here in disbelief, just staring at the TV drawer on the floor. I could not believe that we hadn't been given a penalty there. But uh, we're actually going to pick up th uh, five points in the end from uh, from this particular episode. So pleased to go off to a good start in Division 8. Uh, unbeaten in the first three, we need another three points to secure our safety in this division. And that is exactly what we'll try and do in the next episode. So feel free to leave me some suggestions in the comment section down below. Let me know who you want me to use for for the next episode of course if you missed the previous one there's an annotation or screen over the left hand side over that left fist to take you to that video so you can check it out if you aren't subscribed to the channel already feel free to do so there will be a link in the description and an annotation on screen on the right hand side over that right fist if you don't follow me on twitter feel free to do that as well at chesno gaming of course as well links in the description and that's going to bring this one to a close so thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you next time